Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and today I have some romance recommendations for you that include arranged marriages. I am an absolute sucker for the arranged marriage trope, so I'm very excited to share these recommendations with you. So the first couple books I want to talk about are contemporaries with arranged marriage that I love. Then I have two fantasy romance novels as well as two historicals to wrap it up. So let's get started. First is a recent read of mine that I just loved. I loved this book. This is Broken Whispers by Neva Altaj. This is book two in her Perfectly Imperfect Mafia romance series, but you can totally read this book on its own. Even though I really enjoy book one too, but if you want to just dive into book two, you don't you don't have to read book one, even though I do recommend it. Anyway, um, that's just because uh, there's not really that much involvement with book one that is going to happen in book two. Um, like they're quite standalone novels. So the hero in here, Mikhail, he is the kind of like a right hand man to the Russian um, mafia boss. Um, he was the hero in book one, the Russian mafia boss. Anyway, so Mikhail is a giant of a man. He's giant, he is heavily scarred, and people fear him. Like it's, it, when he goes around and walks around, people are scared of him because of the way that he looks. And so he becomes kind of a recluse and keeps to himself more often. He also has like eye damage um, and wears an eye patch. But anyway, so Michaela's in this meeting with his boss, the Russian Brava, and his boss is like, hey, um, we need to form an alliance with the Italian mafia. So one of you has to marry, um, what's her name? Ah, her name is Bianca. Someone has to marry this girl named Bianca to make an alliance with our two mafia families. And Mikhail volunteers himself. The men, a part of his business, are kind of shocked by this because Mikhail has never really shown an interest in getting with a woman and um, is very reserved and more to himself. So they're shocked when he immediately volunteers himself. It's because he knows Bianca. Bianca doesn't know him, but he knows her as the beautiful ballet dancer. He goes to almost all of her ballet performances and um, just watches her. He thinks she is beautiful and doesn't think she would ever, he would ever deserve a woman like her because of what he's endured and what, he's lo what he looks like, honestly. But he cannot help himself when he realizes that Bianca is the woman that is going to get married off. He's like, no one is going to have her but me. So he gets put in this arranged marriage with Bianca. Now Bianca has been forced into the situation by her father, um, who is not a great man, but she's going to make the most of it. Bianca was injured a couple years ago in a car accident to where her back is injured as well as her neck throat vocal cords so um, because of her back injury she had to retire from her dance career early which she is totally heartbroken by her vocal cords were damaged her throat was damaged um, and so she is not able to speak anymore so she communicates through sign language so the two of them get married right at the beginning of this book and have to navigate being married to each other with all of their past trauma and past experiences but it is so cute and sweet. I love it. If you want a more light mafia romance series, please check this one out. Like this series, I feel like way more is about uh, the relationship and the couple and the like bond between the two than the mafia world. So if you're more into character driven romances, I totally recommend this one. I just, I can't stop thinking about and talking about this one. I loved it. Next is The Initiation by Nikki Sloan. This one is wild. I've only read this one in the series, but I know that it gets even more wild as the series goes on. <laughs> so this one's quite interesting, okay? You have our heroine whose older sister is actually the one in an arranged marriage. She's arranged to marriage Royce Hale, who is the son to a very, very rich man. Until, um, her sister comes to her and is like, hey, I can't marry Royce. I'm pregnant with another man's baby. I cannot. And so our heroine kind of steps up to the plate to make sure that her family does not go down under for not going through on their deal and says that she's going to marry Royce instead. And so now they are in an arranged marriage and they have to get married. And that's all I can really say because the rest could definitely be a spoiler if I say anything else, honestly. Um, but this book gets wild. There's an initiation process that both Royce and the heroine have to go through um, in order to get married and it is cuckoo pants. So I'm gonna leave it at that. The Bride Test by Helen Huang is a classic to me. This one is more of a mail order bride situation, but it's also arranged marriage. His mother sets it up. So Kai is our hero in here. He is autistic and he has been telling his mother for quite a long time, like, I don't need a wife. I don't wanna get married. Don't worry about me, I'm fine. 
in my own little bubble in life. Do not do that. But his mother cannot help herself. She travels all the way to Ho Chi Minh City to go find him a wife. And there she meets Esme and she meets her actually in a bathroom um, as a cleaning lady and gets to talking to her and is like, you would be perfect for my son. I'm going to take you to America with me and you're gonna you're gonna live with my son for a while to try and like convince him to marry you. And so Esme's a little hesitant, but in the end she's all for it. She wants a better life for her daughter. She's a single mother, so she's leaving her daughter with her parents while she travels to America to try and woo this man that her that his mother is trying to put her in a marriage with. Um, at first Kai is not for it, obviously. He does not want a wife, he does not want to live with a woman. And Esme kind of like throws all that out the way. She's like, is a klutzy, sweet woman um, who slowly starts to realize that she does have feelings for Kai and Kai needs to freaking get with the picture because she knows he does too. The King's Horrible Bride by Katie Wilde is another novella that I just love with this trope. So this one takes place in like a fictional royal country named Capria. Maximilian is the king of said country. And um, when he was younger, he uh, got into this business deal with this very smart, I want to say physicist or inventor along those lines that really helped their country go off, like really helped them profit by making this one invention. Anyway, that inventor kind of makes a deal with Maximilian and is like, hey, I will really help you with all of this if you agree to marry my daughter one day so she can have an amazing life as your wife, as a queen. And Maximilian agrees to this and it is years later. Unfortunately, this physicist or inventor has passed and the heroine, who is the daughter he said to put an arranged marriage with, um, just assumes that like the marriage is never really gonna happen. Like she knows that that's not actually going to happen. But number one, her father is dead. She does not assume that this guy is going to fill his obligation when her father has died. Um, and so she's just, she just accepted it. She's like, it's not actually gonna happen. I've never met him in person. It's wild to think that he actually remember the deal that he made with my dad. But uh, Maximilian has been waiting his time. And the reason why he has not come for his bride is because he really wanted to make his country secure and felt like he was secure in his position as king. And so he finally goes to her and is like, I made my promise and I'm gonna keep it. So you're gonna be my wife now. And she's shocked. So is his whole royal court and his advisors are warning him against it because she has not been kind of like trained in the ways of high society, but he doesn't care and he falls for her anyway. And this one was so sweet. I loved it. A Princess in Theory by Lisa Cole is a fun one. Our heroine in here, um, I believe she was adopted when she was young. Um, anyway, she keeps getting these spam emails, you know, like the spam scammer ones that you get that are like, you are the long lost princess of this country. Enter, click this button to get your money now or something like that. And she guess that keeps getting one from this prince, this supposed prince that is like, hey, um, you gotta come back to our country so we can get married. And she's like, this is crazy to spam delete. Until one day when she's at work, a freaking prince does show up on her doorstep, like at her job and is like, uh, no, that's real. Um, we're arranged to be married since we were children. Um, you're from my country and um, come back home so we can get married. And it kind of like spirals from there. I don't want to go too deep into it because I feel like there are some spoilery things in there, but this one was really fun. And I really, this reminds me, I do need to read the rest of the books in the series, but I thoroughly enjoyed this one. The Wild Air by Karina Halley is another arranged marriage one that I just love that I feel like a lot of people don't talk about. So this one is about Prince Magnus of Norway and he is very much a playboy. He's a daredevil. He gets into bad press essentially. Um, and his family, the royal family are not for, for it anymore. They are sick of him getting into these schemes and kind of putting their family in a negative light in the media. So they give him a kind of like ultimatum of sorts. Um, they say either you abdicate the throne because because we don't we're sick of you or you get married to a respectable woman so he obviously chooses the marriage route even though he does not want to get married enter isabella ella of Liechtenstein. i don't know how you say that country i'm so sorry Liechtenstein. and she is not happy about this either she does not want to get married to this man especially because she claims he's a womanizer like it's all over the press he's with a bunch of women she does not want to get with him but the two of them are forced to get married in this arranged marriage situation, there's a lot of bang banter, angst, definitely enemies to lovers in here. And I just feel like more people need to read this one. I feel like a lot of people either read book one and book three, but not only people read book two, 
but it is so good. People need to pick it up. Come on, y'all. <laughs> I'm gonna mention two fantasy romances that I love to have arranged marriages in them. First, of course, is my one and only Radiance by Grace Draven. This is so good. If you didn't know, this is my favorite romance of all time. I love it. It's friends to lovers goodness. This is about Ildiko and Barishan. Ildiko is a human woman, a part of this court. She's the niece to this king and then Brishan is the spare heir to his Kai kingdom. He's a Kai creature. In this world, basically Kai and humans live on the world, but they don't live in harmony. They live in their own separate lands. Um, so they don't really interact. They don't get married. They find the other honestly very ugly. <laughs> And so they're like, you know what? We're just gonna be friends when we get married, it's fine. So the two of them are forced to get married because they're spared to their kingdom and their kingdoms want an alliance. So right when they get married, they're like, I'm not attracted to you, but that's okay. We're gonna be friends. We're gonna be cordial with each other. And through the entirety of the book, they start to realize how beautiful and amazing this other person is and how they would be fools like not to fall in love with each other. This is just amazing. I cannot talk about this book enough, obviously. And then the other fantasy romance that I have is The Winter King, another fantasy romance that I will not shut up about. So this one is about King Winter of uh, this fantasy world. He is king of this land. He has magic powers that are like ice powers, think kind of like Elsa. <laughs> anyway, he goes to the king of Summerly, the king of this kingdom of a different kingdom as like, hey, I won't take over your land if you give me one of your beautiful, famous daughters to marry. And the king of Summerlee is like, well, dang, I don't wanna get off any of my daughters because I love them, but how about I trick him and have him marry the one daughter that nobody knows about that I don't like. Um, her name is Kasmin and she has storm power, storm magic. And so she's forced to get married to Winter in an arranged marriage. And he doesn't know that that's Kasmin. He thinks that he's marrying one of these like famous daughters and he doesn't realize who she is until after they've already literally consummated the wedding, like consummated their vows. Um, Cause she's wearing a veil the entire time they're getting married, the whole time they're doing the first time, like she is completely covered. And he is pissed when he realizes who she really is. And she's like, you know what? I'm gonna take this for what it is. I did not want to be in that house anymore. My dad was kind of abusing me, so. I'm gonna take I'm gonna take this opportunity and just roll with it. Um, and winter is so mad, but the two of them fall in love regardless. I love this one. It's full of both angst and banter and just like amazingness. I love it. And then lastly, two historicals that I want to mention. Of course, we have Never Seduce a Scott by Maya Banks, probably my favorite historical of all time. This one is about Eveline and Graham. They are from two rivaling families. Eveline is from the Armstrong family and. Graham is from the Montgomery family. Their families have been at war for quite a long time, not war, but they don't like each other at all. The king of the land, I think Scotland, I think there was a king at the time of this book. Anyway, he's sick of these two families fighting. And he's like, you know what? I'm gonna force them to get married. So he puts them in an arranged marriage. And um, both families are not happy about this. Graham has heard about Eveline and um, society thinks that she is daft when in actuality, that is not the case. Years ago, Eveline was in an arranged marriage with this horrible man who kind of like told her point blank that he was going to do gruesome, horrible things to her when they were married. She was scared. Her family didn't re really believe what she was saying. And so she decided to run away. And while she was running away, she fell off the horse and um, hit her head. And she's been deaf ever since. No one knows this. No one knows she's actually deaf. She's been getting by by reading lips and um, not really communicating all that much because she doesn't want people to know that she can understand them in case that they force her to get in the marriage with the guy that she was in at first. So Evelyn is kind of hesitant to marry Graham because of her family's like sayings about his family and how wrong they are. Um, but once she meets Graham, she is entranced because he has this low baritone voice that she can like pick up at times, like she can hear. And she is, she is besotted. And he is shocked that this woman like can understand him at times. Anyway, the two of them get in an arranged marriage. At first, um, the two of them are very hesitant about it because of their rivaling families, but uh, the two of them fall fall in love. And of course, throughout the book, Graham realizes like, oh, like realizes that Evelyn is deaf um, and he falls in love with her and it is, it is beautiful. I love this book. And the last one that I want to mention is Return of the Rogue by Donna Fletcher. This is her first book in the Sinclair Brothers series. So this one's about Honora and Caden. Okay, so Honora, when she was quite young, was put in a betrothed marriage to the eldest brother in the Sinclair family. Like that was what the contract said. She's like, she will marry the eldest brother. Um, and so for a while that was Kaven. She was like, okay, I'm gonna marry this guy named Kaven. It's been years though. And Kaven has not come back. He's been searching for his missing brother for years. 
and Caven is just nowhere in sight. No one can find him, no one knows where he is. So the families are like, you know what? We can't find Caven, so you're gonna marry the second eldest brother because technically he's the eldest brother around. So she's gonna marry, I forget his name, but he's the second brother. And she's like, actually like all for this. She's happy about this because that's her friend. She's like, you know what? I feel like we could have like a fun, fun marriage together. I don't think romantically about you, but like you won't beat me or won't be mean to me. So like, this is good. <laughs> this is good. I was kind of scared to, to marry Caven because he's kind of scary. So while they're getting married, literally during the ceremony, Caven walks in. He's like, what is going on? Um, he comes back from trying to find his brother and everything kind of spirals from there. She's now forced to marry Caven because there he is. And she's a little worried and scared at first because he's this giant brute of a man who's very gruff and very grumpy. Um, so she's a little worried. But Caven like shows her like, you're my wife now. I'm going to protect you with my life. Like you are mine now. I'm not gonna let anything happen to you. So this one was a great arranged marriage and I feel like it really kicks off the rest of the books in the series that are amazing as well. Anyways, there you have it. Those are 10 arranged marriage romance recommendations for you. Please let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to. And if you don't feel like commenting any of those things, you can leave me a um, wedding related emoji in the comment section down below. But anyways, thank y'all so, so much for watching. I will see you soon in my next one. Bye y'all. Wake up. Today's gonna be a good day. 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 Wake up. Today's gonna be a good day.